Hello all this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu I am a consultant anesthesiologist and uh, today I would like to cover a very important topic uh, if you get a gap between your MBBS and MD okay normally people take a gap of 2 years but if the gap is extending for example if it is 3 years 4 years and in some cases it is 7 to 8 years then there are some important issues you need to know and there are so many things which run in your mind okay recently conducted a survey in my youtube channel and asked uh, several questions and most of you actually replied that then how to support the family financially because what happens is for example three to four years if you are you know working after mbbs then some part of the family will be depending on your income like your parents or if you are married then your wife and children also would be depending on you okay so that kind of situation how to actually support them financially if you are going for a post graduation because during pg time what happens your stipend will be there that will be lesser than the salary in some places in some places it is good and uh, also you are commitment will increase in the work and uh, stipends we don't know sometimes you know stipends don't come exactly like salaries and that might actually you know affect your uh, help towards your family and second thing is that uh, you know what uh, society thinks about uh, me taking a very long uh, gap and what family thinks about me is also another issue like your juniors and uh, who are getting a seat might actually uh, become your seniors in your post graduation and in some cases they might become an assistant professor and you would be doing pg how to deal that kind of situation also i would like to tell you and if you're really taking the gap then how to make the gap glamorous that is like how to use the gap is also a very important thing you need to know so there are certain things if you do during the gap period it can it can boost your uh, post graduation and further career also so these are the things i would like to cover so first i would like to tell you the family commitments financially how to support them so recently what happened is i got a call uh, from one uh, uh, person who is uh, almost like eight to nine years after his uh, mbbs he got a pg seat now he got a rank for which he would get a dnb okay and uh, so he called me and told that uh, he is getting a salary of around 80,000 to 90,000 and he is having a uh, family with kids. So his question is that uh, like uh, whether he should go for a very good college or he should uh, go to a place where uh, he gets a good salary where he can support his family. I uh, without hesitation I told him that you have to go for a place where you can financially support your family because financial crisis if you have during a post graduation what happens is even though you are in a good place you will not have the mindset you will not have a clear mind to actually learn from that place so the most important thing that you need to be you have to be motivated in for that you should have a clear mind if you have some kind of a problem during uh, a problem running in your family due to lack of money that is a very horrible thing you can face so i told him don't focus uh, more on the brand of the college go with the place which pays you good stipend then he did the research and he found that in north india some college he told me and he told that there he gets a good stipend and he can manage the three years with that then i told him that is the best way for going ahead so the same thing applies to you so if you have some dependents then go for a place where you can pay uh, less uh, you know fees and you get a good uh, this thing so private medical colleges would be out of the equation because they charge a lot of fees so and also the stipend is i don't know whether they will give regularly or not i really don't know only once you enter it depends on the college also once you enter you'll understand that but i surely know that the uh, dnb private uh, hospitals and all these things the fees is less and they actually uh, give the salary in time in most of the colleges which i know i have seen and the government also there is a problem with stipend sometimes what happens is they in some government hospitals they give regularly in some hospitals what happens is in once in three months once in six months some kind of things they'll be doing so in those kind of places also you might land up with a problem if somebody is dependent on you for a bachelor it's a totally different equation but your situation is different so you need to uh, inquire before inquire if it's a government hospital then inquire the seniors uh, like how the salary pattern is you know that there is amount of salary but is it coming every month or is it coming once in three four months then if you badly want to get into that college then you should have a reserve cash okay for three four months if they're delaying and then uh, you need to enter government college that is a more practical way of doing it or you can go for a dnb where you will surely get a good uh, stipend and the fees also less so that is how i think you need to manage the financial aspect of it okay a uh, marriage uh, issue for a marriage i'm doing a separate video for women basically whether to marry uh, during the uh, post graduation time or 
you know after the post graduation i would with timelines i would explain in a video but roughly i would like to tell that uh, for uh, men it uh, men it is a straight forward uh, a point i would like to tell after the post graduation you have to marry and even though there is a lack better to marry after that because during the post graduation time you need to focus on your uh, education and the skill development and the post graduation is going to be very hectic so it is it will be very tough for um, very, very tough for you to manage both family as well as the hospital for women i will do a separate video okay so then uh, the next uh, uh, problem that you would be facing is the uh, some of your juniors who got the seats directly would become your seniors now or some would be like assistant professors in your college where you're going to join post graduation for that i would like to tell you how to deal with that kind of situation so what happens is uh, in your career uh, there there will be many circumstances where you would be working under uh, people who are aged less than you or who might be juniors to you in college so those kind of situations will come because what happens is you are actually working in a, a smaller place and you are maybe 3 4 year junior would have gone to some other country and trained there his skills are in different level he'll come back to that hospital and he'll be heading the team and you will be working at. so such kind of things will happen not only in post graduation but they'll happen in future also so this is the way he'll be trained actually to deal such kind of things so bottom line is that uh, whoever is uh, a junior or a senior you have to respect the position of the person and skill and knowledge of the person so then you should go into a student mindset and you should just behave as if you are a student and start learning from them and not only that when uh, uh, even now i when i go for a training for a workshop or something sometimes a very junior to me will be there training me so i will just behave like a student for one day and learn from them when i conduct workshop workshops in uh, neuro monitoring many many seniors came and uh, you know we we teach them during that one day they will actually behave like a junior they'll ask simple silly questions also and they'll try to learn so that is the kind of mindset you need to develop okay you should not think that you know he is my junior and how can i uh, you know uh, learn from him all those kind of things you need to ignore because such kind of things will keep happening in the okay future. next uh, what happens is uh, the next problem is doubting when the gap increases more than 3 years 4 years 5 years then you start uh, doubting your uh, worth am i really worthy and uh, even if i do pg will i be able to survive in the competition this kind of questions will keep coming i know so for that my uh, solution is you should develop a race horse mentality what is race horse mentality so you would have seen race horses uh, would be having some kind of a screens they are called as blinkers so why they apply blinkers is uh, when the race horse is in the competition race horse should not see the next race horse crossing it okay then what happens is it will psychologically it will go into a commotion and then psychologically it will stop running okay because overwhelming feeling will come the similar kind of thing will happen to you when you compare yourself with your colleagues or juniors so what happened but there's a normal human nature you keep comparing but you need to develop this mindset okay when somebody is crossing you and going with the same degree and same age then you will feel overwhelming but that is the time you have to develop this resource mentality you have to apply blinkers to your life and you have to focus only on your race course okay and keep comparing with yourself and you have to keep going that is the solution for that so next is uh, uh, what society thinks and what family thinks is the next uh, very important thing so your family and society uh, actually will not have a clue about medicine they'll just keep comparing you with others that is what they will do for that the solution is delayed gratification okay so don't uh, actually try to convince them or don't try to prove them your worth okay so what you need to do is you have to start building on your cv start building on your skills and then after a certain seven time like 8 to 10 years or 12 13 years then what happens is a day will come uh, then uh, you suddenly start earning a lot of money you start developing a good uh, status in the society and uh, you start driving very good cars automatically the society and family will understand your worth that is called as delayed gratification okay you don't have to immediately after your mbbs you don't have to prove to anyone your worth okay over a period of time you need to pr uh, prove people what your real worth is for that you have to consistently keep putting your hard work whatever people might say people are there to say something okay don't ignore all that whatever they say you just give a small smile and go off from there and keep working on you and i'm sure 8 to 10 years down the line you will become successful and then all the people who actually commented you before will start praising you okay so don't take the comment and neither take the praise also at the same time you have to be always having a neutral mindset okay 
so next is uh, how to make the gap glamorous so making the gap glamorous is more like see most of you what you guys are doing is that four or five years post mbbs if you are not getting a pgc you work in a hospital most of you work in uh, some corporate hospital or some uh, taluk hospital or those things that is a standard thing the reason that you would be thinking is that you will be in touch with the clinical uh, skills correct that is the old way of thinking i feel so now what happens is now you need to work in places where you can it can affect your future course for example icmr or some research societies are there in india you can apply to them there will be a way to enter even they need doctors with mbbs degrees apply there the two three years you better than uh, rather than spending in a hospital spend in icmr or uh, some research institutes for two three years so they will teach you how to do research so by the time you come out of there you'll have seven eight original papers so then if you start your post graduation then you will have more knowledge than your assistant professors and even hod's actually and how to conduct research you will be valued during your post graduation time like anything and even after that your career will go rocket speed and uh, another way is uh, working in uh, quality departments in hospitals all bigger corporate hospitals have quality departments so if you're doing mbb is an apply in such kind of department they will take you so two or three years they will pay you a decent amount of salary and uh, during that time you will learn how to do audits how to actually do the uh, quality improvement projects how to do root cause analysis how to actually conduct mortality morbidity meetings and if you are more entrepreneurial you can do six sigma you can do so many other things and uh, this actually and after that if you join a post graduation then your knowledge about quality improvement will be more than all the consultants there so they will automatically start respecting you because you will understand how to do root cause analysis how to actually do incident reporting and all that and you will develop the department so and they will absorb up into the same corporate as consultant in future so that is how actually you can make the gap more glamorous so that is what you need to do rather than working in a small hospital and writing some notes and charts and feeling that doesn't serve any purpose okay you neither learn some clinical stuff nor you learn some research or quality like that so many other things are there like you can also learn finance if you learn about finance then it will help your uh, future finances and then uh, you can uh, work in edtech platforms like i don't want to name so many edtech platforms are there like maro and uh, prep ladder and so many other things so you can actually work there and while working you'll understand how the business works and also you will see a uh, very good speakers talking there so you will understand how they present the topics parallelly you can also develop a, a business model for yourself if you really want so that is another way of uh, you know developing as an individual in the gap period and uh, you can also uh, plan a social media platform so what i suggest is all the doctors uh, so in future what happens is you uh, need to develop uh, project your uh, personality to the future if you become a surgeon particularly people should know you for that what you can do is you can start a social media platform like instagram instagram is now actually trending many doctors are uh, you know uh, marketing their skills in instagram so what you can do is you can start an instagram profile and uh, just keep talking about some uh, subject that you know in that way you'll also get updated and pe- you can train people you will help actually people and you can impact people's lives so the small small topics like how to actually maintain your gut how to maintain how to cure migraines how to cure actually your uh, back pain some small small things you can start talking and in uh, it it's a uh, uh, mutually you will also get benefited and it will help people in over a period of years what happens is by the time you finish pg if you still continue it's like 5 to 6 years of instagram presence will get you uh, thousands and thousands of subscribers so later on what happens is when you actually start your practice that will help you so it's another way of actually uh, making the gap glamorous crossing some age if you are thinking that uh, it might affect your uh, neat eligibility that is not there neat has removed the upper limit of age any age person can write neat okay so there is no confusion that i think most of you must be knowing all these things the last thing is uh, can your body withstand the hardship in the pg if you cross some age for example if you cross 7 8 years then you'd be late thir- late uh, 30s then uh, can you actually withstand the stress so for that my uh, uh, answer is see uh, there are people who are in 60s and who work like young people i know many doctors like that many many doctors like that so age doesn't ma- matter there are people who are in 25 to 30 range are not able to work because of the obesity and because of lack of fitness because of lack of the muscular muscular strength so what i suggest is everyday exercise and eating healthy food and keeping your body fit is very important when you're taking a bigger gap so you need to be fit 
okay you have to be fit and then you can deal your post graduation easily and it be, if it becomes a habit and in future also you'll continue the same thing so these are the several things that you need to do in your gap time to make the gap glamorous okay uh, rather than feeling bad going into depression and thinking about society and parents and friends and thinking about all negative things focus like this and you will surely succeed okay hope this video helps uh, uh, many of you and uh, thank you very much for following the video as usual dr dhiraj masapu logging off roger that